Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot. Right, here we go, the final. Now I'm going to completely take off my Pakistan hat. I'm going to completely put aside uh, Pakistan losing in the semi-final, and we're going to concentrate on this final, which is two very familiar foes going at it, New Zealand and Australia. Some people, a lot of Australians, I'm sure, will be saying the little brother versus the big brother. The big brother's probably going to try and bully the little brother in Australia, bullying New Zealand in this final, uh, obviously only in sporting sense, not bullying really. Uh, but I tell you what, New Zealand have a very good chance in this final. Uh, personally, they would have been, uh, for me, the stronger team coming into tournament. They were the stronger team coming into tournament. They've had a more impressive run, I think, in the tournament so far. And it's the ICC World T20 final. And who would have thought New Zealand versus Australia would be the final? Not me. A lot of people were saying Pakistan, England. Obviously, New Zealand beating England in the semi-final in Australia, Pakistan. Two upsets, no doubt. And now we have this final on our hands, which is very intriguing, to say the least, to be honest with you. It's a replay of the 2015 ODI World Cup, where Australia pipped New Zealand uh, there. It's going to be a little bit of a mental battle for New Zealand more than anything. Uh, they've been a they've been outdone a little bit by, I think, the, the complex that Australia have of New Zealand, which is we are the more superior nation in terms of from a cricketing sense. And that has definitely played a role, I think, in past results in major tournaments, etc. as well. New Zealand, they always used to have the tag of being the dark horses. They've now, in the last few years, I think, shaken that tag and become real contenders obviously making the last two odi world cup finals and here now making a final of the t20 world cup There's, they've also made some semi-finals as well of icc tournaments and of course won the champions trophy once before australia never never won a t20 world cup uh, same as new zealand but they have reached a final the 2010 one where they got comprehensively beaten by england kevin peterson obviously uh, causing absolute havoc there really and Paul Collingwood's men getting the win there Australia have honestly coming into the tournament they weren't looking pretty particularly good uh, they lost to Bangladesh away they haven't really had a full strength team uh, they didn't have a full strength team even to play with and see how it, how it worked and there was a lot of concerns around that there's also concerns around the white ball system in Australia is there enough emphasis on it? Is there enough, I guess, importance placed on the T20 stuff? And the the resounding answer to that question was no, but they've turned it around in this tournament. Not had a particularly good start, a very squeaky win against South Africa where it was very close and could have gone either way and a low-scoring affair, completely demolished by England. Uh, but then managed to get the, dob the job done, sorry, in all the other matches. Managed to go through on run rate, pipping South Africa to that second spot. And then put on a fantastic display against Pakistan. For New Zealand, it's been a very different route, to be honest with you. They've had a very good group stage, apart from losing to Pakistan. Where, to be honest with you, they, had a they were in a position where they could have won that game. Uh, Pakistan almost imploding on themselves. We managed to get over the line, over the line, sorry, even. But New Zealand started off their campaign against India, comprehensively beating India as well. Really impressive display. Beating Afghanistan in that all-important fixture to make sure they secured their semi-final spot. And then against England, I mean, it was nip and tuck. It really was. And then Jimmy Neesham came up with the goods. Absolute fireworks against Chris Jordan. I think it was 23 off that over. And that was the deciding over. I think it was a 16th over, if I'm not mistaken. And that definitely turned the match on its head. And in the end, New Zealand got over the line. Daryl Mitchell with a very, very good 50 as well. He was scoring slowly around a run of ball and then he accelerated towards, towards the end. Looked very, very good. And that's a big plus because he isn't a player that has been a regular fixture in the New Zealand team. But he had a very good domestic season uh, in New Zealand and also in other formats as well. Uh, came into this tournament and they backed him to open instead of Tim Seifert, who has done that role for quite a long while, honestly. So they put trust and they, I guess, took a little bit of a gamble on 
Uh, Darren Mitchell just say, let's carry on your good form and we believe in your strengths and your ability. And he's repaid it, no doubt, because that was a very important knock. Look, I mean, they've got a very good team. Williamson is a fantastic captain. Finch is not a bad captain himself either. There's definitely some dynamic uh, in terms of the teams, though. Devin Conway is injured. Uh, from what I know, that's the only injury and only potential change. I can't see Australia being changed. I think they'll go with the usual team, which will be Finch and Warren to open up. Then, obviously, at three, Mitch Marsh, Smith at four, Maxwell at five, six, you've got Stoinis, Matthew Wade at seven, Pat Cummins at eight, nine, Stark, ten, Hazelwood, and eleven, Zampa. And then for New Zealand, their issue is going to be at four. Devon Conway, after punching the bat right against and uh, <laughs> against England when he was very disappointed to get out because he was set and thought maybe he'd blown it for his team, he unfortunately broke his hand doing that. Uh, which means he's not only out of this uh, final, but actually also out of the India series as well. So that's a big blow for him because he has had a phenomenal start to his test career as well. He is going to have to sit out. Now it's who do they replace and do they rejiggle the batting lineup a little bit as well? Because Tim Seifert, if he comes in, he's more of a opener or uh, he can also go uh, down the line. Not down the line, sorry. He can also um, not go down the line. What are we talking about? He can also bat further down the order, but I think realistically, uh, he will not be doing that. Realistically, uh, you know, he may have to slot in at four. The other options they have, from what I know, Mark Chapman could potentially come in there. He's been quite good when he's had to uh, play for New Zealand because of injuries, and he can offer some left arm spin as well. Although, with, I think the issue with that is he comes in as a lefty with Conway, which is good, gives you that left hander in the lineup, which they don't really have many left handers apart from Nisham and Sana. That kind of breaks up the right handers. The only issue is the left arm spin. Uh, he's an all rounder. Do they really need to utilize him? They've got Satner and Sodi both turning the ball into uh, the left hand and away from the right hander. He offers the same thing. They could go really left field and go with a with a bowling all rounder or a bowler like Carl Jameson, Trent Bolt. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they'll stick with Tim Seifert. I would be surprised if they go with Mark Chapman, but that wouldn't be the biggest surprise. Uh, so we shall see how that one plays out. Uh, in terms of the win percentage, I'm very surprised, honestly. New Zealand 40%, Australia 60%. I think the Devon Conway injury is a big miss, no doubt. I think that definitely does give some more percentage points in terms of the win probability to Australia. Uh, in my head, it's a 50-50. It's a toss of a coin. I did actually predict uh, in our last, so in our quality shot awards of 2020, uh, I went round and there was, I think, seven or eight of us, or nine even potentially, and we all went round and said who we thought would win. I, I think I was the only one to say New Zealand. And I stuck with that, and I've stuck with that in the 11 months since. And I'm going to stick with it here. I'm going to go with New Zealand. I'm going to go for them breaking a little bit of a duck. I mean, it's not as bad as how Pakistan had it against India, where we had never beaten them in a T20 or ODI World Cup. Uh, but I think, you know, there is definitely something... There's definitely something there, um, I think, in terms of the, men the mental side of things. I think if they beat Australia here, it's a big big win because they have no doubt been the better t20 side not just in a tournament but over a couple of years at the best better white ball side as well and to be honest the best the better cricket side generally in all formats so for them to win i think is a huge one if they weren't to win i think that actually is pretty disappointing for them because i think they will be expecting to win They'll put it on themselves. Australia, no one expected them. I didn't even expect them to make the semi-finals. A lot of people didn't. For New Zealand to make the semi-finals, a lot of people wouldn't be surprised. I think probably over Pakistan, to be fair. Um, we can rightfully say. Uh, but let's see. Let's see. Um, in terms of the head-to-head -head record, um, 14 matches played. New Zealand have won five, Australia nine. So Australia do have the better... Um, 
ratio there. In the last five matches, though, New Zealand have won three. I'll show you two. I think that was the last series, wasn't it? The five match series when New Zealand were three love up or three nil up, even. Australia came back in the last two. And then in one ICT 20 World Cup game, they actually won New Zealand in that one, to be fair to them. In terms of successful head to head records in first batting and, and second batting, I'm not really going to go into that. Uh, but some interesting. I guess stats here in terms of performances and a flash into the past a little bit, which I think is quite cool. And I think why not? Let's have a look at it. Um, right, New Zealand versus Australia top players stats. Highest individual score, Brendan McCullum 116 not out. Ricky Ponting 98 not out. Best batting average, Brendan McCullum 57, Andrew Simons 117. Don't know how many innings that was, couldn't have been much. Martin Guptill has got the most runs in this fixture in T20s, 435. For Australia, uh, though, Aaron Finch has got the most, 251. Best economy rate, Kane Williamson at three. I bet he's only bowled like one or two overs. Nathan Bracken at four. Uh, most wickets, 16 for Sodi, 13 for Ashton Agar, who I don't think will play. And best bowling figures, four for 28 for Sodi and six for 30 for Agar. Um, as I said, I don't think Agar will play. I'd be very, very surprised if he does. I think Australia will stick with their team. In terms of the other factors, is Drew going to be a factor in debate? I have absolutely no idea. I would assume no, uh, given what we saw in the semi-finals. The temperature isn't really conducive to there being a lot of Drew on in play. However, chasing does seem to be slightly easy. I think winning the toss, most likely either captain will pick to... Uh, field first and then chase that total one because I think in a final yes there's still pressure chasing but you know what you need to get and I feel, feel like that's probably a slight advantage and two um, there's always that worry about for the field side about there being a potential due and the fact that the record shows and states that in this tournament chasing has just generally been the better option overall uh, because I guess you know how to formulate your innings and it's very hard for a batsman to come in and just hit 20 uh, and multiple batsmen come and hit 20s and 30s. You really need to take your time, build a platform and then accelerate towards the end, which we saw with Daryl Mitchell. We also saw the fucker Zaman as well in that Australia semi-final, to be fair. And um, and David Warner, to be fair, to a degree. He batted really well in the semi-final against Australia. Look, I mean, it can go either way, as I said, but I'm going to pick New Zealand uh, just because I'm going to stick to my guns. In terms of the key matchups, which we'll finish up on, uh, to which I think will be quite interesting, Guptill obviously will open um, with Darren Mitchell. Uh, how they see off the new ball will be key, no doubt. Stark is very dangerous, and we saw that uh, against Pakistan where he got the balls to swing and swing quite a bit early doors in that first over that he bowled against box and he actually found a bit of his mojo back as well uh definitely looked a lot more dangerous and, and in a final and we know how much havoc he caused new zealand in the odi world cup brendan mccullum stumps going everywhere so <laughs> you know let, let's see but I, I would assume he's going to be pumped for this it's a rivalry it's definitely a very very I think competitive fixture as well, and neither team would want to lose this. So um, you never want to lose a match anyway. But even more so, I think it's got a little bit of a extra, you know, extra sprinkling and garnish on top, a cherry on top, even not garnish, cherry on top as well uh, for this match and final. Uh, so Stark, I think to Guptill is crucial. I would assume in terms of a matchup, though Guptill won't mind that too much. Will they go with a spinner? Uh, because Gupta has struggled a little bit with spin early doors at times. The only issue is they're not going to use Zamper in the power play. I think that's been quite clear. His role is to bowl outside the power play. And he said it himself in an interview. Could they change it up? I don't think they will. Um, they could go with Maxwell. The only issue with Maxwell is he obviously gets the ball to turn into the right-hander, which is not a particularly good matchup, especially against Gupta, who's very strong on the leg side. They could... He could go around the wicket, try and tighten it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll stick with Stark and Hazelwood and hope that um, Hazelwood, for example, can get it on a good line length, get it to nibble, and go up to, uh, I guess, chase one outside the off stump. Uh, similarly for Daryl Mitchell, who's very good off the back foot, pulls very well as well, and very, just very strong from a still base position where he just stands and delivers. Doesn't really have huge 
steps towards the ball um, and kind of weight transfer onto the front foot. He's very much a sea ball hit ball and the archetypal T20 player, honestly. Uh, and it's interesting to see, but it's effective. So we'll see how he fares as well. Um, you know, he's relatively new to the international stage. So let's see how he goes. And I think on top of that, uh, obviously, Kane Williamson and Steve Smith, I think both those players for me, um, and I'll talk about them together because I said on the streams, neither player for me is suited to the T20 format. The best format is test matches, no doubt. And then to be fair, they're very, very good in ODIs uh, as well, as their records suggest. T20s, as their record does suggest as well, they're not as good. They don't have terrible records. They're not terrible players in T20s. They're still good players in T20s. They're pretty damn good players in T20s, and most teams would take them in a heartbeat. The biggest issue I think they have is the adaptability, uh, and they're not the type of players to play paddles around the corner, laps, and they don't have the power of, you know, a Guptill, the power of a Finch or a Warner. They can't really afford to just blast balls um, and get away with it uh, because they don't quite have that bludgeoning power. So that means they need to then be more innovative. And the issue is that that innovation, I feel like they haven't quite adapted to it yet. Uh, and what that's meant is that they're in this kind of in-between where they very good players, but they almost play slightly too classical to actually score a bucket load of runs at a decent strike rate. They can definitely do it here or there. It doesn't mean they can't do it. I just think on a consistent basis, it's very hard for them to do. Uh, and that's why we see a lot of low scores or then strike rates around the 100 to 120, 125 mark with those two. Um, and it, it showed, actually, because the way that Williamson got out of the semi-final, tried to lap one over the keeper, got caught by Rashid. C. Smith tried to slog sweep. Shadab got caught as well, trying to be more expansive than they normally would. And it's not quite natural to them yet, still. Uh, so then they end up inevitably getting into trouble. Also, there's another, I think, point to be mentioned that in Test Match Rookie and ODIs, there is a propensity for both players to leave outside the off stump very effectively, obviously, and rightly so. But in T20s, you can't afford to eat up deliveries, leaving a lot of balls, so you have to play at them. Um, and the problem with that is, obviously, they are so used to leaving those balls, they're not quite sure what to do with them. Um, and then that, again, gets them into a slight muddle there, to be fair. But they're both class acts. Um, so if anyone can figure it out, especially on the biggest of occasions, it's those two players. I wouldn't be surprised to see them both get some type of score on the board in this final. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised they didn't, if that makes sense, given the format. Uh, in terms of the rest of the New Zealand lineup and who's going to be key, I mean, Conway's a big miss. Cypher, if he comes in, he's going to have to hit the ground running. In the final, it's very, very tough when he hasn't played any matches. Same if it's Mark Chapman as well. Um, then Phillips is going to be crucial now, even more so because without with the absence of Devin Conway, he's going. there's going to be a lot on his shoulders to perform and finish well, uh, score quickly, and also get New Zealand some runs, uh, on top of also Nisham, who's going to be crucial. No doubt. Obviously showed his worth against England, very frustrated that he got out and wasn't able to see them home in the end. They did get over the line, but he was frustrated he wasn't part of that. He was the one, you know, who was in all those memes where he just folded his arms and he's not celebrating with the rest of them uh, when they got those winning runs. And he said, job done, I don't think so. And that's the point. I think he's got this very, very, I guess, determined mentality and one-track mind that we are only halfway there. We didn't come halfway across the world. And he said this to just, you know, make, beat, beat them in the semifinals, you know, beat or win the semifinals and then lose in the final, the last hurdle. Um, I think he is saying, look, we are here to win. Um, and everyone else is saying that as well. Just don't mistake their celebrations for, oh, we're happy to be here. No, we are happy because we're going to go win this. So let's see 
Uh, he's got a big role to play with the bat, I think, specifically. Uh, and then obviously the rest of them, Saturn, et cetera, if they can chip in when they, if they need to, then obviously that's quite vital. Um, and bowling-wise, Australia Zampa is going to be crucial. Can Zampa quieten uh, someone like a Glenn Phillips who plays spin quite well? Can he quieten a Jimmy Neesham, right, with the Googlies? Can he quieten a Daryl Mitchell? Uh, he's bowled very well, Zampa. He's definitely my pick of the bowlers for Australia. He's, he had fantastic control against Pakistan. Let's see how he does. But I think he is going to be key for the Australian side. Maxwell as well, um, especially to the left-handers uh, in Nisham, Santner potentially. Um, and also if Chapman does play, I think will be crucial. And, uh, you know, Cummins did very well. I thought the slower balls, variations, he needs to utilize that again. A uh, bit of, bit of nous about him. He's a very intelligent cricket, Pat Cummins, and he has adjusted well. He got a bit of tap uh, in one of the group games. And then he's from there, he's thought, what do I need to change? I can't just bowl quick, 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 quick on a length and hope to get wickets. This isn't test match cricket. I need to be a bit more innovative. And he's adapted, and he's a very good cricketer with a very good cricket mind, and he's done exactly that. Hazelwood, though, did get to have against Pakistan. Does he adapt? He's very good in the power play for the most part, apart from all that game against Pakistan. But it's the back end where he struggles. So that might be the ball that New Zealand potentially target, and we'll see how that one pans out. Uh, in terms of from the Australian batting lineup, and then we'll finish up. Um, Australia batting lineup and the New Zealand bowlers, I think from the Australian side, Warner is key. We saw the matches where they looked comfortable, West Indies, and then also in the Pakistan chase, where to be fair, he got them into a really good position. Warner was vital. If Finch can come to the party and get some runs, fantastic, but he's not been in fantastic form. So I don't think they'll be looking to him too much if he can stand up and be counted and score not at a super slow rate as well. Um, then obviously that's quite key, like he did against England where he scored too slowly. Uh, then you look once Finch gets going, most of the time he just explodes and he goes completely berserk and gets runs at a very quick rate. So that is definitely a concern for New Zealand. Uh, the biggest thing will be um, that both their spinners spin the ball away from Finch, which is quite a good uh, positive and Santana potentially might open up you would imagine with Bolt I wouldn't be surprised uh, to get the water spin away from uh, Finch and then obviously spinning into Warner which could be a danger though with Imad Wasim we saw that uh, Warner completely tore him apart could he do the same to Santana who's a similar type of bowler potentially yes uh, so that will be an interesting I think, decision from New Zealand. They won't open up with Sodi. It'll be, if they do open up with a spin, it'll be with Santner. Uh, or they might just go with the tried and tested Bolton Southie combination. Uh, but Finch and Warner both do like pace on the ball. So maybe it is an idea to go with Santner to open up. We shall see. Uh, but Warner's crucial for me, to be fair. He's coming to some, a rich vein of form. He's definitely looking very good, uh, fluent and running well between the wickets as he always does uh, but it's just more the fluency in his stroke play has been very good um always been good strong uh, square of the wicket sorry but through the cover regions and just generally has it composed for the most part mitch marsh as well as, is if he gets in he looks very good he looked all over the place against shane nefridi in that first over didn't really know where the ball was almost got out OEW as well just got clattered on the toe and to be fair, that would that spell would be a struggle for any batsman in the world. If he gets going, though, he's very hard to get out of Mitch Marsh. He really is. And he showed that, um, to be fair, um, against Pakistan. And um, yes, he got 20 on and got out, but he got himself out. To actually get him out, that makes sense. He's quite difficult to do uh, in the T20 format. And he's a very underrated T20 player. Uh, so he could have a big part to play here. Uh, and then in terms of the rest of the batsmen, Maxwell, we know what he's about. Um, if he New Zealand cannot afford to let him basically off the leash really and go berserk against him, because if he does, the game will get away from them. Um, no doubt they'll either put on a huge total or they'll chase down a, whatever score is on the board quite easily. Because Maxwell, if he stays in for if he stays in for more than five overs, you're in a lot of trouble because it me most likely means that he is starting to explode on you, uh, and that is not somewhere you want to be. And obviously, Stoinis and Wade, very, very impressive. 
right? They definitely the finishes of Australia. Wade, those three sixes against Shaheen when he got dropped as well. So impressive. Made him pay 41 off 17. He looks, well, he just looked very, very good. And he's a very talented player. He plays with no fear. And him and Stoinis definitely uh, complement each other well. Stoinis is bludgeoning power. Cool as you like. Ice in his veins. And he is definitely the finisher that Australia have needed uh, for a bit of time. And they can rely on him there. Smith, as I said, I've already discussed with, uh, with alongside Williamson. We'll see how that goes. That'll be an interesting one uh, to see how he does as well. And in terms of the rest, their batting lineup is a bit deeper with Wade, obviously, at seven. Um, Pat Cummins at eight can whack. We've seen that. And I know he's done a little, a little bit in the IPL as well, to be fair. Uh, Stark can a little bit as well. And then Zampa and Hazelwood. I mean, you can't expect much from them. Bowling-wise, New Zealand are going to have to rely heavily on um, the opening pair of Bolt and Southie to get wickets. In that power play especially, Bolt will get the ball to shape. Can he get wickets early doors? Can he do to Finch, for example, what Shaheen did? Get him early, get him out there, because actually Finch has a very good record against left-arm seamers. He's got, I think he averages something like 50 with a strike rate of 160 um, for the most part. So that is definitely a matchup to look out for. Uh, in terms of the rest of the bowlers as well, Milne is a key one. Um, because Milne has got the pace. He seems to pick up vital wickets. Him against someone like a Smith uh, or a Maxwell is quite an interesting one to see if he's able to get them out um, because they would, I think they would like that pace on the ball that he gives. He doesn't really get too much movement either. It's all kind of seam up uh, hard into the pitch, um, but very accurate for the most part. It has been in this tournament. And then Sodi is, is so vital. Wicket taker, late wrist spinner, him and Satna against the likes of Smith and Maxwell, especially, um, is going to be a crucial one. Can they get Maxwell out early um, and then see how they go from there? New Zealand have got an accomplished bowling lineup. They might also look towards the likes of Nisham, who bowled quite well against England, to be fair, um, and also Daryl Mitchell, who bowls in test matches. But will he bowl in the T20s? He hasn't as of yet, uh, but they may look to him if they need an extra option as well. Um, Australia also have the option to bowl with Stoinis and also Mitch Marsh. So interesting to see if they turn to either of those guys. They've got a bit of tap when they have bowled. Um, obviously, they're not the ideal players to be bowling in T20s. Yes, they're all rounders, but they're more accomplished in the ODI and test form. Well, the ODI format, you'd say, um, bowling wise. So, and with Mitch Marsh's case, test matches as well. But you never know, they may have to get called upon. Okay, I'm going to go for a New Zealand win. As I said, that's my prediction. And please do check out our live watch along, which we'll be doing tomorrow. Then we'll be covering all of it. And it'll be really good fun. So do get involved. We had a fantastic turnout for the semi final of Australia, of uh, Pakistan versus Australia. Uh, do check out the New Zealand versus Australia final. Of course, it's going to be a cracker. We're going to be, we're going to be crowning a new T20 World Cup champion. New Zealand, Australia never won it before. So it'll be there first and maiden uh, T20 crown, which will be really interesting to see um, how that team then goes into next year's World Cup, which will be in Australia, where both these teams obviously will actually uh, very much like the conditions probably more than here in the UAE. So um, yeah, good position to be in. Anyway, thank you very much guys for tuning in. Please do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well. And also do click the notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you very much. Stay safe and well. Enjoy the final and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.